Hi, everybody, and welcome to our second broadcast of Car Crash Wednesdays here on LinkedIn Live. And as always, this is the kind of accentuator to our podcast, which is Physicians Helping Attorneys Helping People, which is at Physicians Helping Attorneys Helping People.com. And this is all brought to you by Physicians Legal Consultants. And here with that, I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Armin Feldman. Hi, Mike, and hello to everybody who's watching. And as many of you probably know, we do pre-trial, pre-litigation medical consulting for PI and workers' comp attorneys. And we're working primarily on those approximately nine out of 10 cases you negotiate and settle. And we're often the, and we work on the strategic development of medical issues. And we're often the missing piece in maximizing case value. So. Uh, Mike, I know you've got a, a case that you're ready to talk about. Yep. Let's jump right in. So I'm going to share the screen here. You guys can see the fancy scrolling banner. The uh, We're going to talk about a severe whiplash case with shoulder injury and some pretty uh, extensive injuries. So jumping right in, this woman was 58 years old. And this, by the way, guys, this is all redacted. So there's no HIPAA violations here. There's no um, privacy complaints. The names look real only because I wanted the report to feel real, but everything has been changed, including the doctor's names and everything. So this woman's 58 and these reports, this is a comprehensive medical summary report. We include the records that we reviewed and sometimes quite extensive. I've had an entire page filled with the records that we review from five, seven, 12 treating doctors. And we always start with a brief history of events. So this woman was at work driving between school sites. So she was- Wait, Can I interrupt you for just yeah, a minute? please. So, so the way that these reports are typically used is that some attorneys will use these reports to do the medical coordination on the case, but far, far and away, attorneys use these reports as part of their settlement demand letters. And the consistent feedback we've gotten over the last 15 years is by adding these medical summary reports to the settlement demand letter, uh, attorneys are in fact increasing case value. Bingo. That's that's really good to point out, especially if this is someone's first time tuning in, this report's included in the settlement demand. And we, they're, it, they're undoubtedly increasing the value of the settlement. So this woman, the tractor trailer truck had crashed into the rear of her vehicle. Uh, the car was eventually totaled and she actually was upset and was able to drive her car away, but she showed up at her second school and her, supervisor noticed how upset she was and uncomfortable. So they said, you got to go to the urgent care. You got to go to the ER. So she went to the urgent care and she was essentially seen given a prescription for muscle relaxers and then just told to take over the counter pain medication. They didn't think it was very much. They actually didn't do any imaging uh, at that time either, but then everything kept getting worse. So like 20 days later, she went to see uh, her orthopedic uh, specialist and at this time the her range of motion was moderately limited in all directions and x-rays were pretty normal so we, we see this commonly armin right i mean this is kind of a, a very typical car crash right so far it looks like she just may have some soft tissue injuries right exactly right and so she continues to have severe pain in her neck and shoulder then she gets an MRI of her left shoulder, because I guess it's bad enough. We're now about two or three months after the crash, uh, two months. And the MRI is performed and shows a full thickness tear in her left shoulder. So this is a rotator cuff tear. And there's absolutely no doubt in my mind, in my opinion, I opined to this later in the report that it was related to the car crash. She gets conservative treatment those were exhausted and then she had shoulder surgery done uh, which repaired her rotator cuff and decompressed her shoulder joint essentially she had and usually with a full thickness tear uh, it's good that they tried the conservative treatment but usually with a full thickness tear that's going to wind up and needing a surgical repair absolutely so she went through this physical therapy and then regarding her neck pain 
and pain into her left shoulder. She got another MRI. Now we are about six months later and it showed diffuse disc bulging uh, C4 to C5 through C6 to C7. And again, none of this was really elucidated from early on in the crash. So the- so Let me just quickly say something about those bulges. So there are three things that with discs that we typically look at. One is a bulge, the next is a protrusion, and the next is a herniation. Now, by definition, a protrusion is a herniation of the disc. So bulges, uh, may or may not be symptomatic, not uh, terribly serious, uh, but a disc protrusion or a disc um, herniation, that's a serious injury. Thanks, Armin. Perfect. And so she then later in the year went, underwent this cervical digital motion x-ray. Have you seen these used before, Armin? Have you heard of these? Yes, I have actually. Awesome. Yeah. So I get to that later, but it showed some findings, some damage to these uh, ligaments, which is really one of the uses of this motion x-ray. It can really see some of the soft tissue injury better. So in this report, our next main component, then we discussed, so believe it or not, all of this was really a summary of what she went through. This was still our brief history of events. And then we get into our ongoing medical problems. And this is where we opine and discuss the impact on our on the attorney's client's life and how it what her functional losses are and what the relationship to the crash is. Yeah, and I mean maybe just to state the obvious, this is where we give our opinions uh, about the medical damages in the case. So obviously, we're going to talk to uh, our attorney client. We are then going to read all the medical records. We're then going to interview the client of the attorney typically by phone or by Zoom, do whatever medical research we need to do, and then we can produce this part of the report. Yep, so here we go. My opinion with a reasonable degree of medical certainty that as a direct consequence of the crash, she's left with these several ongoing problems. One, neck pain. So she reported to me, I, we do a phone interview, usually takes about 30 to 60 minutes, and or by Zoom, uh, whatever the client prefers. And she said it felt like she constantly has heavy bricks in her neck 24 seven. She used to be very active. She would do Zumba. She can't do it anymore. And she just doesn't have a social life anymore. So we're building this narrative for our attorney client to have, you know, set up this the appropriate uh, negotiation. Right. In fact, Mike, you did such a great job here because what we want to do in this section is, uh, of course, we want to opine about the actual injuries and the symptoms, but we always want to give our opinion with regard to mechanism of action of injury, uh, causation. And we think it's also important to talk about the functional losses uh, that the client sustains. Before I go down to the mechanism, I also noted that just again to paint the picture, her her adult son lives with her and reported that now he has to clean, shop, do the laundry, and without him, she couldn't take care of herself. Again, painting the picture of how how injured she is. And this is where you talk, you mentioned you kind of, you know, a spoiler, gave the spoiler about how we include mechanism of injury. Right. It, this graph is something I've used repeatedly because it really demonstrates how the spine forms and gets into that S-shaped curvature uh, to injure it, those ligaments that are coming through the back of the neck. Right. And it also points out that also, of course, we're going to back up our opinions with evidence from the medical literature. Yep. And so based upon these findings, I was able to say it's more likely than not that a combination of these structural injuries are what caused her significant neck pain. So again, we're just still on neck pain, which is you know how we have to organize this. This is a 10 page report. So then we get into causation. This, this part serves to set up the specific and make it really a no brainer that the, the crash caused the injuries and losses that we're talking about. And so, what we do uh, is there are different ways the for physicians to determine traumatic causation of injuries. And we like these uh, studies and papers that are done by Freeman and his group. 
that uh, make it very clear uh, how to determine traumatic causation of injuries. Yep. So exactly. yeah, got these three criteria and Mike outlines those. Yep. And one of the, uh, this is a paper that I, I liked that I found for this, this case that really speaks to the future serious medical issues after whiplash injury. And Berglund et al. in 20, 2001 put out that a seven-year follow-up with 4,000 people concluded that when, or people who suffered whiplash, the relative risks, which is the risk of having future issues, increased for headache, thoracic pain, low back pain, fatigue, sleep disturbances, and ill health. So again, we know these things, but the literature and the evidence it, it, using that is what really gives it power and weight in these negotiations. Right. And so based upon all of these, you know, running through the causation, the mechanisms of injury, with regards to her neck pain, I was able to then, within a reasonable degree of medical certainty, conclude that due to the auto crash, she's going to suffer neck pain in a limitation of normal activities of daily living. And then in red, I put here, because given the current status in that it's been over two years since the crash, it was my opinion that her neck pain is now permanent and will worsen over time. And also bringing in those DMX results that um, the said that she suffered a 25 to 28 percent whole person permanent impairment. So pulling it all in, and then this is verbatim notes. If you watched our car crash Wednesday last week, you know the structure of these reports. We include verbatim notes because again, we are not treating doctors, but we we compile all of the medical record and talk to the client and all of the uh, medical. Uh, imaging and whatever can be done to form these opinions. Right. You're right. Back up our opinions there. So next was shoulder pain. So everything we just talked about was neck pain. So now we're talking about shoulder pain and she had this rotator cuff surgery and she was now regressing. So now this is uh, about a year later and she's regressing and the, she had an IME done by an orthopedic surgeon who wrote that based upon it, there is a 70% SLU. And this is a scheduled limitation uh, um, amount in the left shoulder. And I included this chart that's from this consultation that showed she had a significant reduced range of motion, still lingering after that last rotator cuff surgery. And how unusual is it to have the IME doctor help us out in our reports, right? So true. Yeah. Exactly. So he even said her restriction would be no lift, no lifting greater than 15 pounds, no working above her shoulder level. And this has made it extremely difficult for her to let alone work, resume normal life. So then I was able to make another opinion in agreement with the IME doctor that her shoulder pain and, uh, range of motion were, were probably limited and permanent. Again, more verbatim notes. She had post-traumatic headaches that uh, she, you know, accounts very plainly, very cleanly that she, you know, used to get headaches, but now they're totally different. She's getting them seven to eight out of 10 intensity. And then I use, again, back it up with some literature that headaches are a common long-term issue after whiplash injury. And then ultimately, it was my opinion that her uh, headaches are a direct result of the auto crash and the, the headaches might be permanent and her prognosis will really depend on the future treatment of her cervical spine injury. Right. And something that I'm sure our audience probably knows, but uh, headaches could be due to uh, uh, concussion that she may have uh, experienced, but also just as likely the headaches could be coming uh, as a result of the neck injury uh, and uh, the spasms that are spasm that's caused by the uh, neck injury. I should mention real quick for anyone watching live, you can actually, or, or watching it on replay, please uh, ask any questions, point out anything that you, you have an opinion about, or if you think it might be useful, helpful, We'd love to answer any questions either during the live broadcast or later. And ultimately, you can also email us at comments at physicianshelpingattorneys.com. 
and we'll be happy to get back to you. If you have a case you want to discuss, we're happy to do that consultation. Uh, we can also, you can hear more on our podcast. We have multiple episodes discussing a lot of various cases and, and things that we put in to these reports. Those podcasts can be found everywhere, not just on at our.com, but uh, Apple and uh, uh, Amazon. Google podcast. Yeah. Right. All right. So let's get into some uh, the parts that our attorneys uh, really love is this future medical care and costs. So as let me just say something about that, yeah. because through our years of doing this, what we have found is that even very, very good attorneys tend to underestimate future medical care and costs. And I know that you all have your ways of doing this and providing it for your settlement demand, but uh, by having a physician uh, also add their opinion with regard to the future medical care and costs, almost inevitably those costs tend to go up. How could they not, right? right. Um, and we're really including the full spectrum of of what this crash has you know, caused uh, to be necessary. So in this report, and this is different for, for every case that we, that we analyze and produce these reports for, she had chronic severe neck pain, limited cervical range of motion. So she's gonna need to follow up with her orthopedic surgeon. She's gonna need uh, evaluation and subsequent treatment. And this is where one of the one of the better newer technologies that's been helping uh, therapy that's been helping these these patients with pain in their neck and in their joints has been PRP platelet rich plasma, and I know Armin, you have actually personal experience with this as well as uh, a lot of your cl attorney clients seeing success after PRP. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you, I had it for my own uh, neck issue some years ago uh, and uh, have been symptom free now for about three years. But PRP, platelet rich plasma, is a relatively new treatment. And in, in many treatment settings, it is surpassing or supplanting uh, steroid injections as the first treatment of choice. It's been around maybe for 10 years now. It was actually started by a physician uh, where I live in Denver. Uh, and now it's uh, spread across the country. Uh, it's actually called regenerative medicine. And um, with this uh, kind of treatment, the, um, what happens is the physician takes your own blood and, and manipulates that blood and concentrates the platelet cells from the blood. They also do a, what they call a lysate. Basically, they, they freeze the blood and then they're able to extract the growth factors. They're not growth hormones, but growth factors that occur in platelets. And then they concentrate that and then inject that back into you. So you're getting your own blood back. But the key factor here is that the platelets and the growth factors, they actually stimulate uh, your stem cells and they will cause uh, healing and new growth. Uh, and one of the reasons why they do the lysate is that gives you an immediate growth factor effect. And then you get a longer term growth factor effect from the platelets itself. And it can, it, it, it can actually be regenerative uh, in uh, many situations. And so, and by the way, uh, we can thank a lot of our professional athletes for being kind of the guinea pigs in this when it first got started. And uh, if you watch any NFL football, some of the, sometimes the commentators will say something like, oh, uh, he had injections last week. And that's all they say. But what they're actually talking about is that the, the uh, player had these PRP injections. And within a very short period of time, mm -hmm they get enough healing that they can go back and play. Now, I might not be able to play. I might need three or four weeks to recover, but they're playing in a few days, right? But uh, this awesome. is a very uh, effective uh, a, a treatment. It's relatively new, and I think it's something that um, you want to be aware of uh, for your uh, clients uh, with regard to future medical care costs. And we've estimated the PRP 
in general based upon the research in we do this for each area but in new york where this case took place i was estimating those the entirety of those treatments would cost about fifteen thousand dollars yeah and that's probably good for say three sets of treatments great mm -hmm. so again recommending this that the client um pursue and then given my opinion again, that she'll require MRI imaging of her cervical spine uh, within the next five to 10 years. So we include that. And that more than likely, given the progression of her symptoms, she's going to benefit from an anterior cervical discectomy and fusion, an ACDF. And then I include that ample literature supports the benefits of ACDF in cases of this type of axial neck pain. And I included two different studies that show 83% of patients had good to excellent results from this and that it should be considered for patients with severe pain, significant impairment, and good psychological health, just like this client who have not improved sufficiently. And then I talk about her headaches, neurologists specializing in the treatment of headaches should be used, and then give my opinion that her shoulder pain and limited range of motion because this the nuances of rotator cuff uh, shoulder pain are, are, are very challenging. I couldn't make the jump to, to needing a shoulder, you know, uh, shoulder replacement or revision at this point, but the uh, nonetheless, she was going to need, or, or actually I did, um, no, no, in this case, I, I get a lot of these cases confused. I did not believe that she was going to need or include an estimate for, you know, a, a shoulder replacement. So, right. uh, but in this chart, which we include in all of these, this is an estimated cost of future lifetime medical expenses based upon our opinion. You run down the list, it's pretty self-explanatory on what these are. We, we keep these very reasonable. We know that an outlandish number does not help you. Right. And even with being reasonable, but being comprehensive, the estimated costs here just almost hit $150,000. I like these charts because they simmer, they, uh, they summarize our narrative above and it's a quick and handy on the left side. Obviously these are our medical opinions with regard to the future treatments and our medical opinions to a reasonable degree of medical certainty or medical probability on the right side for the cost of those treatments. So uh, this is the end of the report. If anyone has a case that they want to discuss, here's our phone number. If phone doesn't work for you, by all means, send us an email. We check this daily. And really, it's, it, these reports are to help you save time, increase case value, and we do it without breaking the bank. We are, uh, we are very reasonable uh, physician legal consultants, and our fees reflect that. And our turnaround time is excellent. I mean, Armin, how quickly are you turning these around these days? Uh, I two to three weeks. Yeah, I'm I'm rated about two weeks as well uh, yeah. most of the time. So it really actually depends more on lining up that phone call with the phone interview and and how quickly we get records. Right, right. So in fact, that's probably what puts me out to three weeks. It really helps us if we can get those records in right away. Uh, so and what anything that we can do to help you facilitate getting those records to us, we're happy to do. That's all I got. I think we we let people go and, and tune in. I would say tune in next Wednesday. I have a lot of fun doing these. Uh, we're going to pick another fun kind of interesting case. I already have a few ideas and we'll great. do it again next Wednesday if you're up for it, Armin. Great. Oh, you bet. OK, have a great day, everyone. And let us know if you have any questions.